Hi, PJ Scott here with another edition of Veterans Forum. And I am very proud and pleased to have this honorable guest I have today. And I'm sure you will enjoy watching today's program. Uh, I have a book here that was given to me by Commander Bill Beck of the American Legion in Bainbridge Island. It's the memoirs of Harry Truman. And no, I didn't dig up Harry Truman, but he was a World War I veteran. But I want to read just a little short paragraph, and I want you to be thinking, ooh, who does PJ have as a guest today? Uh, in his mem memoirs, he writes, I wrote Mama again on June 22nd, shortly after I arrived in Olympia, Washington. Dear Mama and Mary, well, as we arrived safely the day before yesterday, here I was going to give the Congressional Medal of Honor to a wonderfully handsome young man. Yes, folks, I am very honored to have Mr. Bud Hawk on Veterans Forum today. Thank you so much for joining us. It's an honor to have you on the program. And for those of you, that younger folks who don't know about Bud Hawk, he won the Co Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, what year? Tell us what year that was. 1944. 1944. But before we get into how he became a recipient of this very prestigious medal during World War II, you had a life before you went in the military. Tell us uh, where you were born. Well, was your father in the military? And, uh, my father was uh, just out of the military from World War <coughs> uh, I. Mm -hmm. uh, he was going to uh, sc school on the f first GI Bill in, uh, out of San Francisco. Uh -huh. My mother was a farmer's daughter from Eastern Washington who was down there going to Mills College. Oh, when, oh, okay. when they met. Uh, uh, I was... Uh, so were was you it? born in San Francisco? I was born in San Francisco. Okay. I have two sisters. Oh. Uh, we were born, one, one of us in, in uh, San Francisco, one in San Mateo, and one in Oakland. So oh, okay. okay. <laughs> moved around, but he, when he got out of school, uh, they moved up to, before I was a year old, moved up to Tacoma and Seattle. I lived there, I started school in Tacoma, and uh, went to four different schools in Seattle in the next oh. two, three years before we moved to Bainbridge Island. Oh, okay. And, uh, How old were you when you made it to Bainbridge Island? Uh, seven, seven, okay, seven, seven or eight. Purposes, uh, it I'm was sure a long time ago. Uh, you're a native, <laughs> yeah, you're a native. But I, uh, um, I had been to four different schools in a, in a year or so, mm -hmm. or two years, uh, and uh, I didn't know whether I was coming or going or right, already right. been. And mm -hmm. The teachers couldn't figure me out, mm -hmm. so uh, they, uh, uh, my mother insisted, and they really didn't like it. They said, put him back. Instead of starting the third grade, I came home after uh, a week or two and said, I have no idea what she's talking about, and I have no idea what the kids oh, are doing. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. And it's for moving around so much. Right. So she insisted they put me back in the second grade. Mm -hmm. Not to my credit, I never did any hard work after that. Oh, I see. Okay. I didn't get a lot of honors, but I had a lot of fun. Well, the honors were to come years ah. later. So where were you when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Uh, we were asleep in the old place on the island, and it was early in the morning. I don't know what my dad was living, uh, doing. Uh, listening to the news on the radio, and he had been stationed over there in the Coast Artillery. Oh, okay. Uh, during the war, and he said he called he called in. The bedrooms were next to each other, and he says, "But the, the Japs just attacked Pearl Harbor." Okay, well then you probably are from a little bit more unique family because when I've talked to many uh, veterans, it was like kind of, "Where's Pearl Harbor?" Many of them didn't know, but your yeah. father was stationed well, there, so he's seen very pictures well aware. I my dad had taken there. And, oh, okay. And, uh, the volcanoes, he was a mm. photographer mm -hmm. and, uh, in the artillery and, and worked over. I still have some. Now, was your dad an Army man? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how soon after December 7th, 1941, did you enlist, get well, drafted? Well, I, 
my birthday is the end of May, uh -huh. so I was always about a year behind not having repeated the second grade. Yes, right. So uh, they let us finish our senior year if you were already in it uh -huh. when the war started. They uh -huh. paid you uh, 4A or something like uh -huh. that instead of 1A. Uh -huh. And uh, as soon as you graduated, and, and then I was already 19, uh -huh. uh, I went, I had three weeks, I think, uh -huh. where they said, greetings. And I had a... Uh, Boy, they knew right when you were graduating, they weren't going to let you get a vacation. Right huh? waiting. <laughs> well, I knew it was coming. Somebody yeah, said, right. why didn't you enlist? And I said, well, only thing I've ever heard about was the Army. And of course, around right. here, it was Navy, Marines. Right. And uh, my dad said, well, you can, you can do any part of it you want to. So I mm -hmm. I just said, let, go ahead, let them send me where they want me. Right. And uh, they were going to send us, they had an idea the Army did. Uh, I pick on the Army once in a while, so I, I, I'm too that's, old to be drafted. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. But uh, they were going to make their own engineers. Uh -huh. And uh, it must have been an aptitude test, not a grade test, because mm -hmm. mine weren't that good. Mm -hmm. I got along, but I didn't. And where was your training at at this time? I went down to uh, uh, Fort Benning for basic. Okay. Uh, went from watering the lawn in the rain at Fort Lewis down to 90 degrees at night in, uh -huh. in Fort Benning. And the humidity is horrible. Oh. Yeah. They, they, they killed some people. They didn't understand. You couldn't take them out and march them around the next day unless right. they were used to it. Yes. And yeah. get acclimated. Right. Then they right. made you sweat. Right. But I had uh, three months of uh, basic. I went to college for three months up in Jonesboro, Arkansas, concentrated course. And I was doing all right in everything but uh, math and physics. Uh -huh. I hadn't. So what was the Army's ultimate goal for you to train you to be? To make us into engineers. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, they found out pretty quick that they could draft engineers. Uh -huh. <laughs> A lot quicker they could make, make engineers out of this bunch. And besides, they needed infantrymen real bad. Right, right, yes. So guess right. where we went. I can just imagine, <laughs> yes. So We're when did you leave America, and did you take one of those yeah. famous troop we ships had, we see uh, on movies? Had more trading in uh, uh, Georgia, Alabama, and Arkansas, and uh, shipped overseas uh, the uh, 2nd of July, okay. 1944, and uh, got out a nice big ship, took off across the Atlantic at breakneck speed. Uh, didn't even have any, it was a rebuilt ocean liner. Now, did you go to England or did you go straight? Went to England. Okay, yeah. okay. And how long were you able to stay in England? About a week in the rain. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you were used to it living in Washington. I mean, you used to miss about right at home. <laughs> it didn't, didn't bother me. We, we dug holes in the rain and we're, uh -huh. we're used to running around in the woods. So that right. some of the city boys had, between the Georgia swamps and, and uh -huh. England's rain, they, they had a tough time. Yeah, yeah. If they yeah. were from Arizona or Texas. Or New Mexico, I would imagine, no, yes. Got across the channel. Okay. I, that was the easiest part I had, the whole thing. Just going across the channel, the seas were not. Took 45 minutes. Oh, okay. In an airplane. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, what a fancy man! They he landed flew the it over. The beach. Okay, okay. They never shut off the propellers. They had built a, a steel thing down there, and we got out of one side, went around the other side, helped them load in litters, mm -hmm. and then took off up the hill. Okay, so for our younger audience who may not have taken World War II in school, and there's clearly. Uh, so young that it, it would be a great grandfather or grandfather. You went to France before the invasion? No. Okay. July. July. Okay. Say, so, because that was June, and I went in afterwards. They had established the beachhead. Okay. And built this airstrip. Okay, here. I want to make that clear. Yeah. So, yeah, we walked for a day and a half, and you. Uh, we're at the front. But still, there was a lot of mopping up to do. People seem to think once they invaded, the war was over, and that wasn't as easy oh, no. as that. Was, yeah. They were not too far <coughs> from the beach, right. but right. they had it cleaned up, and were, okay. they'd removed all the bad So did areas. you have to parachute out? Oh, no. no okay. We landed right uh -huh. on the beach. Gee, okay. What, what, lap Climbed out one side, 
went around the other side, helped them load wounded in, and the plane uh -huh. never shut its engines off. It took back off oh, to okay. England, okay. which beat trying to haul them out in a small boat and load them onto a ship and go right, right, across right, the English, right. what you might call it. Channel, yes. Yeah, yeah right. It had a lot of names for it. Mm -hmm. So about how many men were in your, is it fair to say, division, squad, forgive the Navy girl? Uh, I think there was, uh, I finally got up and was assigned to, uh, they sent us up just as replacements. Mm -hmm. And s each division that needed replacements, and they mm -hmm. all did, mm -hmm. uh, was assigned so many men according mm -hmm. to what they had right. available. And they sent you up and... Uh, MPs directed you down the road. And right. Well, you had a lot of training. Do we, uh, I don't want to assume anything. Did you feel confident that you could do what the Army yeah, wanted you to do? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. right. Uh, I was uh, an expert rifleman mm -hmm. already. Yes. And uh, used to living out in the woods and fending, mm -hmm. and we weren't afraid. To now, what kind of rifle were you using, Mr. Hawk? An, an M1, the okay. Grand. Okay. The Grand. Okay, so let's get to the event that leads up for you becoming a recipient of the Congressional oh. Medal of Honor, because this is not something you win. I mean, you no one wants it. to be in a position of winning this thing. Like, I really would rather not qualify to belong to the Blinded Veterans Association. So this isn't something you're striving you're, to you're, do here. You're a, a recipient or a holder. Yes. Uh, Never, never a winner. I, I will tell you right off, I'm no hero. Mm -hmm. I had no intentions. You don't go into it with a do or die. You go into it with a do and live. Right, and right. They're going to die. Right, yeah, right. As General Patton said in some of his best language. Uh-huh. Uh, anyhow, uh, I got shot at once on the way to the company, which kind of unnerved me. I was about to head back for the beach. Mm -hmm. Got to the company and introduced myself to the captain. And, uh, kind of, kind of shocky, I think, because he said, uh, "Hawk, you, uh, you know how to fire a machine gun?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, sir. I fired expert. Mm -hmm. Duh. Uh huh. Right. I said, "Fire him who what?" <laughs> so he was really happy to oh, see yes, you. Oh yes, go down there. <coughs> uh -huh. In that corner is the foxholes with the machine gun section. Mm -hmm. Machine gun section. That's the rifle company. That's Two machines, guns, about 13 guys, you know, mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. down there. There's three foxholes and five guys. Something is wrong here. Yes, yes, yes. They were very glad to see me. I bet, so I bet. That's the way it started out. And okay. Went on like that. And, mm -hmm. uh, got up to, we were in action about uh, oh, less than a month, because I got there in the middle of July, and, and, uh, the 20th of August was the thing. We broke out of the hedgerows, which were terrible. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I've our, heard about Our those intelligence, things. I've never forgiven. There could have been places where we could have trained for something like hedgerows. Mm -hmm. But they were a perfect place to defend and the worst possible place in the world to attack. Mm -hmm. Everything was a fortress. They'd been there for years. They knew exactly Yeah, when what we're it was. talking about hedgerows, uh, we're not talking about a little three-foot oh, no. hedgerow on, on the way to your front door. These things have been humongous they and have probably been there like hundreds, a, a berm, more uh, like hundreds a berm. of years, very thick. Eight uh, to ten feet tall. And, and possibly wide, I've heard some people say. So we're not, don't get your uh, little garden trees, hedgerows. Trees, sized trees and bushes. Right, right. And if you stuck your head up over the top, bing! <laughs> You'd lose your head, of course. Okay. So was that time period from July to August, uh, you saw a lot of fighting? No. Or was it sporadic? Kind no, of? we spent most of our time galloping and riding day after day, forward, backward, sideways. Uh, and once they broke out of the uh, hedgerows, it was, it was General George and away we go. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. mean, we were moving. In mm -hmm. fact, we moved so fast that we moved north, and the British and Canadians and Polish were supposed to be coming south. We made uh, several hundred miles, and they made 50 or 60. Uh, but what we did, we moved so fast the Germans weren't ready that all of them that were along the coast were cut off. Oh, I see. And that's Shambaugh, or the Falaise Gap, they called mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
we had the fortune, misfortune to be just beside the only roads out when we closed the gap. So to say this another way, you were caught in the middle. You were chasing some Nazis, but Nazis that were trapped were chasing you to get out of... Well, they were, they were trying to escape us, and it was carnage. Uh -huh. It was really carnage. The Air Force came in and just... Their heavy equipment couldn't get off the road as farmland, uh -huh. and they came down these big jugs, the P-47s, which we loved. They carried a freight car load of bombs and ammunition. They just uh -huh. went down to eight up the road. Uh -huh. Then they got close enough and the artillery came in and then we came in afterwards. Okay, so let's get to the day. The day. The day. Okay. We pulled into this place And at what night. day was it? Do you recall? 19th or 20th of August. They all blend together. Well, I would imagine so, everything that you're seeing. We didn't care what the day was. Right, you were alive and breathing <laughs> air. That's what we cared about. Important. Yes, okay. Or you'd look and say, who's over there? We don't okay. know. Who's over there? We don't know. Well, let's back up to and find somebody we know. August, yes. So we can go. But it was, right. it was right around the 19th or 20th of August. Okay, okay. We bedded down for the night, set up our guns looking across this pasture. We could hear people moving across over there. It was probably... 100, 200 yards, mm -hmm. but it was all big green pasture, and you, there was roads behind it. And we'd come up another road, and uh, awful lot of clatter, but we pulled in, and he'd been running all day long, and sat down, and when the dawn came up, we thought, those guys across the road there are making an awful lot of noise. Mm -hmm. Clatter bang, you, you could hear them, but you couldn't tell what they were saying. Yeah. Oh, you could hear their voices? Oh, but yeah. You, but oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, that seems pretty close to me. I pretty soon it occurs to us that the ones we could see were Germans. Uh-huh, right. So we started shooting mm -hmm. and uh, stopping their trucks and things like that and mm -hmm. shooting up the buildings where we could. Well, right. I mean, you, you, you don't shoot a thirty caliber machine gun as a tank. Mm -hmm. There's three reasons. One, it gets their attention. Yes. You don't want. Two, because you would be targeted. It won't hurt them. Mm -hmm. right. right. And three, it makes them mad. Yes. All yeah. of which are bad. All right. You right. shoot up the infantry they've got, and they're blind without their people. Mm -hmm. So right. we'd shoot them off, and then we'd shut up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the tank look around, they didn't have any people, they'd back up and get some more people. Right. Well, pretty soon they kept coming across, and pretty soon they were chasing us out of the woods. Mm -hmm. And if you've never been goosed by a tank with an 88... <laughs> no, I'm happy to report you, I've you, never you had that experience. What, yeah. <laughs> what speed is. Yes, I would imagine. Uh, I, uh, we made that, but we got back, and they, they, were, they were just chasing us all over. And we were doing our best. We had a few bazookas, mm -hmm. but even a bazooka, as much as you hear about it, you had to hit them just right. Mm -hmm. to knock them out. Uh, you could ring their bell right. and everything right. and make them pay attention, but uh, you had to hit a vital place or knock a track or right. something. Right, right. Uh, we're back, we brought up, so we had a ravine, a deep ravine with a stream in the bottom of it, ran right through where we were. It was full of dead horses and cows and pigs. Oh, gee. And Germans. And it's late August, you know, it's kind of warm. Yes, yes, yes. All yes. the holes are whistling. Right, right. But uh, we had two tank destroyers, which were uh, uh, like a tank with a, with a heavy gun, only light armor. Mm -hmm. They were fast and furious. Uh, our tanks were slower and of light armor and not as big a gun. So they brought up the tank destroyers. And Are you a praying man? I think I would have been saying some prayers along about that. I was that. busy. Yeah, yeah you I were too busy. busy to pray. Okay. I think swearing, but I don't think much praying. Yeah. We saved that for later. Yeah. You know. Okay, right. Yeah. I always laughed at the ones that didn't go to church before, but they did afterwards. Yes. I thought, yeah. you know, that's, well, never mind. Yeah. They, uh, tank destroyers come up and we're yelling, get them off of us, and they said, we can't see them. Mm -hmm. So I'm running around out there, and I can see both of them. Mm -hmm. and so I know there's one behind that building and another one behind those trees and everything. And they didn't park out in the open. You know, you always park right. behind something. Some kind of so camouflage. So I got back in the middle and uh, pointed out the building and said, you know, there's a tank behind that building. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And over in those grove of trees, there's three more tanks. You can't mm -hmm. see them, but they're there. Yes. So those, and those guys were good. Mm -hmm. They would line up that building with the agreement that I would get out of the Army language road uh -huh. before you shoot. Right, right. Because you didn't want to be in front to muzzle blast. Well, no, no, no. Turn yes. you inside out. Yes, yes. And, uh, so we were going pretty good, with, and they were good. They, they would put an armor piercing through the building and then another shell right through the same hole. Oh, and we okay. were picking the Germans off, uh, and they didn't, couldn't see where it was coming from, mm -hmm. uh, which worked to, good till. That was to your advantage, well, yes. sure. Yes. And uh, I am feeling kind of a smart, yeah, never mind, uh -huh. uh, and hiding behind an apple tree. I didn't see one of the tanks on the other side. Uh huh. So he shot me right through the apple tree. <laughs> oh, gee. Okay, where'd you get it? In the got leg? Well, it, 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 it almost through my leg, but uh -huh. not quite. Uh huh. It didn't break anything, didn't hit any serious oh, equipment. Okay. Well. And uh, I took off afterwards and headed around the corner, fell over another tank. Mm -hmm. I, I think to this day, one of the incidents, it seems funny, but not. Bang, and I'm on the ground, and tanks for training. You never drop your rifle. Right. You always uh, got right. it. So I was on the ground there wondering if I can still move or at all. Uh -huh. And there's a German sticking up in the turret. And to this day, I almost wish I hadn't shot him, because I'd sure like to have known what he thought of that crazy American who has attacked my tank with his body. Because uh -huh. I uh -huh. did. It went clang. Right. I recovered first and shot him, and he went down the tank, and I headed back for, for Mama and Papa, which was the two tank destroyers right. with this tank and a couple others right behind me. I'm sure, though, if you hadn't shot him, you run the risk of oh, not well, having time to wonder about anything. You don't even, does my leg you, work, yeah, or yeah. am I done? He's uh, going to come and squash me. Of course, yes, of <laughs> I course. could run like a rabbit, boy. Uh, uh -huh. You know the ones who bugs Bunny with his... Legs turning like wheels. <laughs> right. Over yeah. there, zip in right. the ditch. Right, right. Snuggled up to a dead horse. And right up above me is these two tanks going bam, bam, bam. It worked, worked, but I was deaf as a post. Still am partly. Oh, okay. And the tankers, when the smoke cleared, they came down and dragged me up the bank. Said they had to pour a couple of cans of water over me. I smelled so bad. Uh huh. But over in the corner, when I got my hearing back, uh, things had quieted down. They, the Germans started, they started just shooting buildings. And the first building they, they hit, why, Germans poured out of it like ants. Oh, okay. White flags. Yes. And yes. once they started, the rest of them started. And occasionally they would put a shell in another building. They, we took uh, several thousand uh, prisoners right in our little area. Mm -hmm. And the... The regimental front took in 15,000, uh, not wow. counting the equipment that didn't get mm -hmm. out. That, mm -hmm. was, uh, that, was, that was fine. But so you were shot pretty badly. Well, what, where did you go? Was there a mass unit there? Or did you no, end up being one no, of those people we, who went on a plane we and went back stage. to England? We had age stage. Okay. And I was still motivated around and with the, with the TD men, the tank destroyers, uh, uh, they washed me off a little bit and mm -hmm. decided we, we definitely needed a drink of something or anything. And I said, there's a German supply truck right over there. I know because we stopped it. Uh -huh. And I'll bet you. And I was right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They, for which they were very grateful. Oh, between I'm there sure. and the age station, things got pretty polluted. Mm -hmm. We're just downright drunk. If you had not had the ability to see where those German tanks were, and shout that information to your tanks, you and a bunch of other Americans might not have made it out of there. You know, you, you don't, uh, they, I mean, they, they had to have a confrontation like this, which would have cost a lot of people. Of course. As it was, uh, we were so happy to, there was 15,000 people that the, the truly patriotic thought comes, not we got them, no, we won't have to chase them clear to Berlin. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so at what point did you 
uh, after all this, I assume your officer, division officer, someone recommended you. What's for Later. this honor? Later. Yes. I went back to the aid station finally, took a bottle with me for the doctor. Uh huh. <laughs> I said, fix my leg first, and then you. <laughs> he got a probe. Oh, oh, my legs hurt. Oh, he dipped it in just iodine thinking about first. It. <laughs> <laughs> he, he dipped it in iodine first. Okay. He come up and looks me straight in the eye and says, there's no bullet in there. So it did Army, go I, I was warned not about Army language, especially uh -huh. on television. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, what do you think made the hole? About five minutes of no repeat, you know. Right, right. <laughs> and... Uh, there was an aide man there with him, and he looked down, and he just dropped my pants there, rolled up in the cuffs, you know, in the boots, and there was a bent bullet. Oh, wow. Which I had with me till I got to the hospital the last time, and, and somebody stole it, which was always happening. But they probed it out, and he says, well, you've been walking around here for an hour or so with this. you kind of bloody and everything, but it had Stop bleeding. Were you just so pumped with adrenaline you just didn't even realize that? Well, with everything that was going everything on. Everything worked. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So we went to a rest area after that action and uh, went back to the aid station every day and put new bandages on it and mm -hmm. gave me a purple heart to send home. And so since we're coming to an end, when did you get home? I got home, uh, that takes a while. I was reassigned after the hospitals and everything the last time I got wounded, which was in December, just before the bulge. I missed the bulge. Gee. Mm -hmm. Oh, gee. Well, we're, we're happy you missed it. So you're here <laughs> with us today, and you did make it back to Washington. And President Truman flew out. Uh, there's going to be a picture you'll see with the President Truman giving you the Congressional Medal of Honor. Now, real quickly, you had a life after the war. I'm so pleased you used your GI Bill, went to college, and became an educator. The elementary school teacher and principal for 31 years. Wow, and you married a lovely woman, and you brought a picture in of her. You're a real handsome couple. And uh, I want to thank you and all World War II veterans, whether you fought on the Atlantic or the Pacific, thank you for serving our country in a real, wow, terrific hour of crisis. Uh, being a California girl myself, I was born in your neck of the woods, Santa Cruz area, and my family was from there, and they were terrified the Japanese would come through. Uh, the Golden Crate, and I would look ridiculous speaking to you in Japanese. This is P.J. Scott with a uh, Congressional Medal of Honor recipient, Bug Hawk. God bless you. We're still at war. Continue to pray for our troops. See you next time.